Okay, hey everyone. Uh, today we are going to demonstrate how to replace the gauge and uh, pressure relief on a Ansel CV98 um, energy valve. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go over is the valve itself and then we'll talk about the tools and things that are needed to do this work and then, uh, and then we'll actually show you how to do it. Okay, so before we get started, I uh, just need to go over some safety um, things that need to be discussed before you start working on this valve. And the main thing is, is that you wanna make sure that there's no pressure on this cylinder before you start taking components off of the valve. So the, the gauge, right now this gauge is reading zero, which is clear that there's no pressure on that gauge. However, sometimes these gauges can lie. They can go bad. Uh, and they can provide faulty information. So just to be on the safe side, what I would recommend doing is you can loosen up the, uh, and I've got this one already loose, uh, but you can loosen up the burst disc uh, just enough to where the uh, agent, whatever's in it, will start trying to come out and it will start hissing. And if it starts hissing, just let it continue to hiss, leave it there, let it continue to hiss until it's completely empty. Uh, if this tank is full, uh, same scenario, you can loosen this up a little bit, it'll start hissing. Uh, it may take a day or two for it to completely empty out, uh, but I would just let it hiss overnight until it's completely empty. And once that's done, uh, and you know there's no pressure on it, then you can go ahead and, and completely remove any parts that you're uh, needing to replace. first thing we want to look at here is um, the pressure gauge itself. Um, if you'll notice, uh, the green is, is centered on the uh, center of this protective awning, I'll call it, or lack, for lack of a better term. Uh, so what I, would, what I would recommend you do uh, is just maybe put a little mark uh, on the center, just a little dot there so we can see uh, exactly where that thing was centered at the time that it was installed at the factory. Uh, and we're just gonna take that gauge out uh, and replace it with a new gauge. And then over here, we've got the uh, burst disc, which uh, lives behind this, this hex nut here, uh, which actually serves as a pressure relief if, if the um, cylinder becomes overheated. We're going to take this component out and replace it with a new one. We've got uh, the tools that are needed for performing this exercise, and typically shouldn't take more than about five minutes to replace both of these components. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need some standard Teflon tape. Uh, so we've got a roll of that. We've got some silicon grease, uh, which we're gonna use for the um, burst disc, uh, some high pressure silicon grease. Uh, we've got uh, some pipe thread seal that we'll actually use on the gauge itself uh, along with the Teflon tape. So we're gonna use both of these together for the gauge. Uh, I like to use cotton swabs for the uh, smaller thread items, uh, typically because the, this thing comes with a brush that's just too big. Uh, we've got a torque wrench. Uh, now I've got the torque wrench set to just under 25 foot-pounds. It's, it's between 24 and 25 foot-pounds. And that is gonna be used to set the, um, the burst disc uh, to the right torque setting as recommended by the manufacturer. So uh, we'll show you how to use that. And then we've got a standard ratchet style uh, socket wrench. It's a 3 8 drive. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a 3 8 drive. You could use half inch if you want. Um, we have an 18 millimeter socket and we've got a 7 16 wrench. Uh, the socket actually will, will fit the, um, the bursting disc. That's 18 millimeter, and then we've got a 7 16 box wrench that we have filed down uh, to fit behind the gauge because it's very close tolerance. So those are the tools you need. Uh, I, I like to keep a, um, a mallet on hand just in case some of the uh, fittings are too tight, and uh, you use the mallet just to bump the thread, uh, bump the wrench when you're loosening things. Sometimes it'll help you get. Uh, 
get some of the components loose, loose before you take them off. But all of this stuff should be removable by hand. Uh, okay, so, uh, so the first thing that I would recommend is that if you're going to do a bunch of these, that you go ahead and get your gauges set up uh, with tape and pipe sealant uh, before you actually go to work. That way you're ready to replace the gauge as soon as you get the old gauge out. Uh, very easy process at that point. So we're going to go ahead and get to a, a, get our gauge um, set up and our uh, burst disc set up. So the first thing we want to do uh, is we're going to apply some Teflon tape just a little bit around the threads of the gauge. And we want to make sure that uh, we don't put the Teflon tape over the actual sensor on the back of the gauge because it would impede the gauge's ability to actually sense pressure. So just make sure that that center point is clear. Uh, and then we're going to apply some th pipe thread sealant. And as I said earlier, I don't, I don't want to use the brush because the brush is just really gives you too much sealant. We don't need a whole lot here. Uh, so we're just going to apply that uh, pipe sealant to the threads. This is actually a PTFE based sealant. Uh, and this will provide a good seal for the gauge. All right, so once we have that on there, we're just again making sure we don't have any of the pipe sealant on the actual um, sensor for the pressure. Uh, that one's ready. And then for the burst disc, uh, we just want to put some of this high vacuum or silicon grease around the threads and on the burst disc itself. So I'm just going to use one of these swabs here because I don't want to get this stuff all over my hands. And we'll just smear that on there. It doesn't really matter about the quantity. And we are ready to go. This does not provide any seal, so to speak. It just lubricates the burst disc itself. Okay. So now for the actual replacement process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the gauge out. And as I stated earlier, if you look between the gauge and the if you look between the gauge and the actual valve, it's very, very close tolerance. So a standard 716 wrench probably isn't going to fit behind there. So what we did is we filed this one down to where it would actually fit behind the gauge. And you should be able to remove the gauge by hand by turning it counterclockwise uh, until it's loose enough to turn by hand. And we'll just pull this gauge out of here. And now we're going to put our replacement gauge in. And what you want to do is you just want to um, go ahead and you know hand tighten the, the gauge in as far as you can go hand tight. There we go. And then you'll want to use your wrench to go ahead and bring it all the way around until it begins to tighten and once it has reached the point where it is firm you just want to center up your your uh, green normal pressure range with that dot that you made on the top of it and you're good to go so that's the that's the gauge and for the bursting disc, you'll want to use your 18 millimeter uh, ratchet wrench with your 18 millimeter socket, excuse me. And uh, we're going to remove the old one. As I said earlier, you can use a 
mallet just to kind of bump it, just to get it loose. And then uh, once it's loose, you can hand thread it out. All right, and then you'll get your uh, new bursting disc and you can hand tighten it in and then uh, tighten up with your uh, socket wrench with the same. You'll just take that, um, take the 18 millimeter socket, put it on the torque wrench. Torque wrench has already been set to between 24 and 25 foot pounds and we'll just turn that until it clicks and she's set and that's all there is to it thanks for watching us today